that sound we've all heard. The harsh screech of the landing gear meeting the runway is the sound of a calculated sacrifice. It's the sound of rubber ceasing to be part of the tire and becoming part of the pavement itself. Every commercial jet landing is an event of extreme controlled wear, where friction generates so much heat it literally cooks and transfers a layer of the tire onto the concrete. A single Boeing 737 can leave behind the entire weight of a car tire in one landing. Now, multiply that by the over 1,000 planes that land each day at a major international hub. The resulting figure is staggering. Thousands of kilograms of rubber accumulate silently on the runways every single day, creating a massive safety problem few see and even fewer discuss. This documentary is a journey to the front line of an invisible battle. We will show you the complete story of this war against rubber from the physical instant of touchdown that creates the problem to the military-like operations executed at night to eliminate it. We will uncover the giant machines, the specialized chemicals, and the high-precision protocols that keep our runways safe. Because this is not a simple cleaning job, it is a critical engineering operation that separates a routine landing from a potential emergency. The next time your plane breaks smoothly, it will be because hours earlier, another kind of crew had already done its work in the dark. The process begins with a principle of brutal, unforgiving physics. At the exact critical moment of contact, the part of the tire touching the ground is completely and utterly stationary, while the massive aircraft is still moving at well over 250 km per hour. Forcing that static patch of rubber to accelerate instantly to that tremendous speed generates a microscopic, violent explosion of heat, so incredibly intense that it doesn't just wear the rubber down. It flash melts and chemically vulcanizes it directly onto the runway's rough, porous texture. This is a deliberate, calculated sacrifice of material, engineered from the outset to preserve the core structural integrity of the tire itself. It is the sheer staggering scale of this phenomenon that transforms it from a minor event into a monumental engineering challenge. Take, for instance, the Airbus A380, the double-decker giant of the skies. With its 22 massive tires, a single landing event can deposit more than 13 kilograms of rubber onto the tarmac. Now, apply this same logic to a true global aviation hub, like New York's John F. Kennedy International Airport, with roughly 1,200 landing operations occurring daily. The total accumulation easily exceeds 6,000 kilograms of rubber every single 24-hour cycle. That's the weighty equivalent of leaving three entire compact cars scattered and smeared across the asphalt day after day after day. This residue is not a simple nuisance. It is an active, operational enemy to safety. Its most dangerous effect is the critical reduction of the pavement's friction coefficient. A runway coated in a uniform layer of rubber becomes exceptionally smooth, like comparing the slick ice of a skating rink to the fresh, grippy pavement of a mountain road. For a pilot, this translates into an effectively shorter landing strip, as the required braking distance stretches longer, erasing a precious and vital margin of safety. The danger multiplies geometrically in wet weather. The rubber deposits act as an impermeable sealant barrier, preventing rainwater from draining through the textured design of the concrete. Instead, the water pools on top of the rubber layer, creating the perfect conditions for hydroplaning. In this perilous state, the tire loses all physical contact with the runway and floats on a thin film of water, rendering the brakes and steering utterly useless. An aircraft experiencing hydroplaning becomes an inert, ungovernable mass of metal, sliding helplessly forward on its own momentum. Furthermore, this layer of rubber is indiscriminate. It adheres with stubborn tenacity to the hundreds of lights embedded flush within the runway surface. These lights, which delineate the edges, the center line, and the thresholds, are the critical visual map for a pilot landing at night, in dense fog, or under heavy rain. A lens coated with rubber can lose over 80% of its luminosity, virtually disappearing from the pilot's view at the precise moment it is needed most. Therefore, the mission is twofold, to restore the pavement's essential friction and to reclaim the vital visibility of the guidance lights. Before any cleanup can commence, a precise, data-driven diagnosis is mandatory. Runway maintenance crews do not rely on the human eye to assess the danger. They depend on rigorous metrology. For this task, they deploy specialized vehicles, 
often modified vans or light trucks equipped with a hydraulic arm that deploys a standardized test wheel. This vehicle traverses the runway at a constant speed while the test wheel makes contact, measuring the slip resistance with laboratory-grade precision. The data is transmitted and graphed in real-time, creating a comprehensive friction map of the entire runway length. When the measured values fall below the strict thresholds mandated by aviation authorities like the FAA, the order for cleaning is issued. It is a declaration of war, grounded entirely in data. The battle itself is a major logistical operation conducted almost entirely on the night shift during the precious four to six hour windows when the runway is closed to all traffic. At high volume airports, this cleaning cycle can repeat every two to three nights. There is no single weapon, but rather an arsenal deployed based on the severity of the contamination. The most common method is ultra high pressure water jetting. Trucks equipped with industrial pumps that generate pressures thousands of times greater than a domestic pressure washer traverse the runway in methodical lanes. The jet, sometimes using hot water, functions like a hydraulic scalpel, shearing the layers of rubber from the rough concrete surface without eroding the pavement itself. The contaminated water and debris are immediately sucked up by an integrated recovery system, leaving the area clean and surprisingly dry. It is an effective but deliberately slow surgical process. For older, more resistant deposits that have bonded almost like a new composite material, crews turn to chemical cleaning. Tanker trucks apply specialized alkaline or enzymatic solutions onto the asphalt. These products are engineered to attack the molecular structure of the vulcanized rubber, breaking its chemical bonds and transforming the hardened mass into a slurry that can be washed away. This operation demands rigorous environmental control, as all effluent must be contained, captured and managed to prevent any runoff. In the most extreme cases, the heavy artillery is brought to bear, mechanical milling. Imagine an industrial grinder the size of a truck, with a rotating cutter head equipped with thousands of tungsten steel picks. This behemoth advances down the runway, physically ripping and grinding the rubber crust from the surface. It is an aggressive, noisy and dust-generating method, reserved for the restoration of severely degraded runways where surface texture must be completely rebuilt. The cutting-edge technology in this field comes from extreme cold, cryogenic cleaning with dry ice. Here there is no water or brushes. Tiny pellets of solid carbon dioxide at nearly 80 degrees below zero Celsius are accelerated to supersonic speeds and blasted against the surface. The thermal shock is so violent that the rubber contracts, cracks, and is blasted free from the concrete, subsequently sublimating into inert gas. It is a spectacularly effective method for the delicate, deep cleaning of runway lights, as it leaves no wet residue and poses no risk of damaging the sensitive optical and electrical components. The cycle does not end when the rubber leaves the runway. The mixture of water, chemical agents, and particulate is transported to treatment plants within the airport's perimeter. There, the water is purified through multiple stages until it meets standards allowing for its reuse in irrigation or industrial processes or for safe discharge. The recovered rubber begins a second life. In modern facilities, this material is crushed, washed, and separated from contaminants transforming into valuable crumb rubber. This granulate can be integrated into modified asphalt for quieter, more durable roads, into sport surfaces, or into molded products for urban use. It is a clear example of a circular economy born from a critical safety necessity. When the sun rises and the first wave of aircraft lines up to land, the runway glistens not just from the morning dew, but from certainty. The certainty that the surface upon which those tires are about to scream has been meticulously prepared, tested and optimized to deliver the maximum possible friction. That absence of rubber, that bare textured pavement, is the final result of a complex chain of engineering, logistics and human effort. It is the silent guarantee, renewed every single night, that allows the daily miracle of commercial aviation to be, above all else, an act of predictable and controlled safety. The next time you feel your plane come to a firm, decisive stop, you will remember that braking didn't begin with the pilot, but hours earlier, in the darkness, with the roar of pressure washers and the cold silence of dry ice.